Welcome back to the Superstar Roundup. Once again, we're having a good old three-in-one since I was traveling for work for two weeks and didn't have access to a good PC or mic. But honestly, like last time, it's actually worked out okay. Two of the three episodes we're covering today aren't particularly interesting, so we're going to rattle through those and move on to the latest episode that is definitely worth talking about. First up is episode 73. If you cast your eyes to the staff list on the left, you'll see that this was a comparatively small team for Super, at least on the surface. Toei Animation Philippines are credited there as key animators, so it's hard to know exactly how many people were working on this episode, but the presence of Noel Año Nuevo as a supervisor makes me think it was fairly significant. Anya Nuevo is actually from Toei Animation Philippines itself, he's one of the big talents there, and you may recognise his name from episode 31 where he debuted next to the now beloved Yuichi Kurosawa. On the subject of outsourcing, the second key animator list is interesting as well. We have three Korean names there which suggests this was most likely outsourced too. In fact, two of the three names here worked on the episode before this, which again suggests outsourcing. Unfortunately, the studio they're from isn't listed, which isn't common, but it's not unusual either. For example, Studio One Pack, who we talk about a lot, aren't usually credited by name either. We just know based on their website and the staff associated with them. Essentially, all this tells us is that Toei didn't want to put many of their own in-house staff on an episode like this. This kind of thing has happened quite a lot on these in-between episodes, so I do think it's a conscious effort to alleviate some of the time issues they will more than likely face on the upcoming arc. The main person I want to talk about on this episode is Hiroyuki Itai. Itai has worked on Super since the very beginning, but was only recently promoted to a supervisor. I've spoken about him in the past, but at the time I only had guesses as to what his style was. This episode has pretty much confirmed my assumption, but let's call it a 90% guess just to be safe for now. He worked under Masahiro Shimanuki for much of the series, so it's not too surprising that there are some similarities here. The main thing that stands out to me are the large pointy ears that sit quite high up the face. The nose shape is quite distinctive too, being quite pronounced and with a large underside. And on characters like Vegeta, the hairline is fairly high and the widow's peak quite angular. I think I just need one more episode to confirm this 100%, but as of right now, I'm pretty confident. Either way, the episode was absolutely fine, so let's move on. Episode 74. Whenever I see Yukihiro Kitano's name, I kinda start to fill with dread. His issues with time aside, I really do not like how his style has developed over the course of Super. Fortunately, he's not a huge part of this episode, and when his work does pop up, it's actually mostly fine. The main staff on this episode are from Studio One Pack, so once again, this is an episode that is primarily outsourced. Interestingly, I believe this is the first time One Pack have done an episode without Yui Kinoshita. At the very least, this is the first time we've seen Sutomo Ono without her. When these things happen, I get very happy because through process of elimination, I can now work out what Ono's work looks like. It appears Ono is all about pointy noses, and that ear shape is very distinctive. It's often hard to put these things into words, but hopefully through the screenshots here, you'll get the idea. To help clean up some of the other animators' work, you have the chief animation supervisor, Miyako Suji, playing her usual role here. At this point in the series, I imagine many of you know her work, but again, bulbous ears, rounder characters, just a softer approach in general. As we move into the second half, this is where Kitano steps up, handling the bulk of the action. It's not particularly great stuff, but again, I find myself not really caring for an episode like this. It's serviceable, and that's all I'm really looking for until we hit the upcoming tournament arc. Lastly, episode 75, the big one. This was supervised by Shuichiro Manabe and one of the newer supervisors to the series, Koji Nashizawa. Much like Itai, Nashizawa has worked on the series since the beginning, but was only recently promoted to a supervisor. He was actually the one who animated the Xenoverse 2 cutscenes. But this first half's visuals are dominated by Manabe's corrections for the most part. That said, he's not really the talking point for this. It's Futoshi Higashide who blows us all away with the opening Goku vs Gohan fight. As I've said in the past, Higashide typically works on almost every single episode, which means his work only shows fleeting moments of brilliance due to time constraints. With around three weeks since his last appearance, it's not surprising that he was able to deliver something as substantial as what's on show here. 
What's interesting is that it doesn't feature his typical character art, and looking at the good number of second key animators on board, I wonder if he simply submitted roughs for cleanup before moving on to his next episode. That's a bit of conjecture and wishful thinking on my part, but given the outsourcing on the last episode, it would not surprise me if they wanted to let one of their best animators get ahead for a more important episode. Moving into the second half, we have a pretty drastic change in art style here, and this style I believe belongs to Koji Nashizawa. Again, like Itai, because he hasn't done enough episodes, I can't say with 100% certainty yet, but there are definitely some common traits running between his episodes here. The ear is a major tell, it's especially blocky and tends to sit quite low down the face. Likewise, his noses tend to be quite pointy and pronounced. He's the top credited key animator on this episode, so chances are much of this second half belongs to him. The fight here is very conservative, but it's all very polished and I think it works just fine. As nice as the animation was in this episode, it's the storyboard and direction that really carries the episode to a new level. This episode is packed with terrific compositions thanks to the director and storyboard artist Ryota Nakamura. There are so many details that elevate scenes to new heights, from the symbolic heartbreak in the tea to the flashbacks projected behind the silhouettes of two best friends. There's a lot going on here that really demonstrates the importance of a good storyboard. Great art is nice, but when it's framed in an uninteresting way, you end up losing a lot of impact. Honestly, episode 75 is one of the best episodes of Super we've had in quite a while. Its direction hits the mark in all the right places, and the animation is right there to back it up too. Before I go, I just want to say thank you for 5k subs, we've grown a lot in a short amount of time, so I really do appreciate the support. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been shouting me out. When I first started this, I wasn't really sure how many people were interested in these types of videos, so it's been very reassuring to see the response. But that's about it for now, I'll cover the preview of the new opening in another video, so I imagine there's probably quite a lot of excitement about that, female Broly and all that good stuff. I'm also currently working on videos for episodes 1 to 3, so I can cover the old episodes in line with the dub, and I've also got the next episode of Super Supervisors coming soon with a little surprise included too. But until then, I will see you next time.